Hi, my name is Willix, and this is episode 11 of Age of Engineering. Today we're going to uh, automate empowered oil using a super circuit maker. I looked at a bunch of different people's videos on how they do this stuff because it was all new to me, and I didn't like any of them on the way they did it. I thought I could do much better, or at least I would try. And this is a circuit I developed on my own. And we'll get into this in just a second to some detail. But for now, let's explain what's going on uh, so that you understand why I made it the way I did. A couple of things that you need to understand first. So basically how we're doing this is uh, the canola is being fed into the canola press, which is making it a canola oil. Canola oil is going in here to the fermenting barrels being fermented and being fed out of them into these fluid tanks which are in then in turn placing it in a fluid placer. The fluid placer is just in the plain um, deactivation mode. In other words it's not looking for a redstone signal at all. It will constantly try to press place oil in the world if it can. If there's already fluid in front of it, like if there's already oil there, it doesn't do it. It doesn't overwrite anything. If there's already uh, empowered oil or crystallized oil, it won't overwrite it. It waits till there's an air block and then it places the oil. So I didn't need to do anything special to tell it when to place oil. I just let it place it when it can. Next up, um, for the droppers, I'm using two droppers. And I'm doing, a lot of people did it as they would make the uh, crystallized oil first and then put it through a second process to make the empowered, which just seemed foolish. Not everybody did it that way, but so enough of them did it. Now notice the empowered canola. If we toss it in first, it, no harm, no foul. It doesn't do anything. It just sits there and waits. Then if we toss in our crystallized boom, it, they both get, happen almost one after the other immediately. We get our empowered oil, which gets fed out to our uh, oil generators. So we can drop both seeds at the same time, doesn't matter. Don't have to try to time them out one after the other or do an extra step checking for crystallized oil before we drop the other seed. That was another important point to know. So, um, this scanner here from Extra Utilities is checking for empowered oil. Um, you just make sure you got empowered oil in front of it, set to current block, boom, it's done. And then it's, uh, I'll show you how I did this later if you don't already know. I just got uh, one of those cables running through to this. Now this one is in pulse mode. You take and tap it with a uh, a redstone torch to turn it into pulse. So it needs a pulse from here before it's going to do anything. And then it sends the fluid out through there. Alright, so far so good. Now we've got one other scanner here. This one is looking for oil. So it's got oil in front of it. I just press set to current block. It then finds out there's oil. And then it runs line up here to my circuit. So let's come up here and take a look at what we've got going on. So this line is running to this blue input here. And because there's oil, it's turned this torch out. This little thing here is called an inventory scanner. And it's looking inside this and going, hey, there's at least one of something in there. So it's turning this torch out. This one here is, or this thing here is looking in here, discovering there's at least one of something in there and saying, okay, I'm going to turn this torch out. But I've got this set, to, uh, this lever set to off. So this torch is lit. Okay, which is stopping. If any one of these four torches here 
is lit, this one can't light. Okay? Once this one goes out, all four of these are out, this one will light up, send a signal to these, and tell them to drop a seed each. So let's try it out here. We'll flick the switch, and you see this one as it gets oil or not oil, it switches back and forth, causing this one to drop seeds. We come over here, we see it dropping seeds, and making power. I don't really need that much power right now, so we're going to turn that off again. All right, so how did we make that thing? It looked kind of interesting. How do you make something like that? Because that, I made that one myself. So the first thing you're going to need is a redstone circuit. That's easy to make. It's just some stone slabs. You get 12 of them. We place that down in the world. Now we're going to take our redstone torches. Just These are just regular redstone torches. And we'll put the four redstone torches on it. Oh, five actually. There we go. Then inventory scanners. These things are pretty easy to make. Ordinary chest, some tiny redstone, tiny plates. Tiny redstone is just regular redstone. You get nine of them. Tiny plates or is just the uh, redstone circuit that I showed you to make. Get the tiny plates. Okay, so we put one of those there, one of those there. Then we take some of that tiny redstone that we were making. We're going to put one there. These are inputs. These are going to be our outputs. Okay, now we do have to do something else. We've got to uh, deliberately tell it what's inputs and what's outputs. So you need a screwdriver. That's just uh, lapis and a couple of iron. And I'm going to shift right click the tip of this and that's going to mark it as a uh, input. And I'll shift right click the tip of that. And I'll mark it as an input. If I miss by a little bit, let's say I'm over here, what will happen is the shift, it hides it. Now the circuit's still there, it's just hidden. Just shift click again and it comes back. The reason you're able to hide them is if you have a very complicated uh, redstone setup, it can cause some lag. And if you hide it, it gets rid of the, the updates, that, uh, the visual updates, and get, might solve a little bit of FPS problems. These don't create very much. This size circuit's not going to create practically any at all. Okay, we also, now it, uh, you can see it knew to do it for the uh, inventory scanners. Now these torches are actually kind of like inputs, so we've got to do it them as well. And this torch is inputting these sides. Okay, and then our outputs, I'm not holding shift, I'm just right clicking and I'm making up pushing it up to the edge. Okay, so that's the basic circuit that we have over there, but I had some interesting colors going on. Let's see how we did that. For that we need the uh oops. palette and brush. You need a palette, which is uh, just stone and some tiny plates. And the brush is just wool, planks, and a stick. So easy stuff to make. Now we hold, for this we hold Alt. Not Shift, not Control, Alt. Hold Alt, this comes up. <coughs> and if we want to set the um, inputs to light blue, we click on light blue. And then we pick our inputs. Whoops, I guess I didn't do light blue properly. There we go. So all our inputs are light blue. 
Then we want to go, say green for go. We'll pick lime green as our uh, outputs. And the stuff in the middle, we'll make it pink. Okay, so since there is no nothing, like no lever or anything attached to this one, it's lit. No lever attached to this one. No inventory beside this, that's lit. No inventory beside this, so that's lit. All four of these must be out for that one to light up and send out the seeds. That's how I made the circuit. This is pretty interesting stuff. Um, let's go on and show you something else about this mod. It also ha you can make a blueprint. And to make a blueprint, uh, you need an empty map, so that's a compass inside some uh, paper. And then surround it with lapis and you get a blueprint. You take your blueprint, you put it in here, and it, this, this blueprint's an AND, the next one up is a NAND, etc. And it goes through like to the OR. I'm not going to say them all because I'm going to say them poorly. Let's get up to something really complicated. Comparator is complicated enough. Okay, and uh, I'm going to need one a stone. Put it down there. Oh, yeah, let's show you. These are some of the others that it had. An AND gate. So when I wanted to figure out how to do an AND, I just looked at what they did. Uh, I put the end up here. And so it was the three torches with lines running out of them to that one. That's how they made an end. I basically made my own end. Doesn't have to be placed exactly this way, just so long as the general circuit is the same. This here is a NOR. Three inputs, one output. So now for the comparator. Now you must have all the parts in your inventory when you go to make this thing. And I'm not going to have all the parts, but we'll get there. So I need one constant. A constant looks like that. So I need an adder. An adder takes that. Okay, and now I can make my constant. Back my adders. Okay, and let's see what else do we need. I need one lever. Okay, what else do I need? Four subtractors. Subtractors are just adders, so I'm going to need some more adders and I need more tiny plates, I think. Oh, not a two by two. Whoops, no, that's a divider. We want an adder. And then the subtractor. Or, or was I already on that? Never mind. Yeah, four subtractors. And I'm going to need back my adder. There we go. And there's our circuit. That thing looks a lot more complicated than you probably expected, right? The only part we really wanted from a comparator was the uh, inventory scanner. But comparators can actually do a fair bit more. They can uh, subtract signal, one signal from another signal, etc. And that's why all the rest of this complicated cir circuitry is in there. It's not just an inventory scanner. But it's kind of interesting how they laid it all out. 
And so when you're trying to figure out how to do other things, you can start off with some of the basic circuits that they've made, see how they did it, and then start applying it uh, differently. That's basically what I did. So that sort of covers this off. Um, I keep shutting this thing off because it's it was creating too much power and I didn't need it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch more uh, vibrant capacitors and then I'm going to set it up the same way I did in Project Ozone 2 uh, where once the capacitors get to a certain amount they're going to shut the thing off. Let's say um, so they always try to be between 20 and 80 percent full for the uh, vibrant capacitor banks. Other things um, I haven't automated uh, oh, hold it. Let's talk about these things here. The garden cloche. I was really excited. I was really excited about the garden cloche. The way this thing works, you put dirt or whatever in the bottom. Your canola seed here. you got to feed it water and power. And you can put bone meal in, and it goes really, really quick. But in the update he changed the recipe on this thing made it much nastier whoops garden clash you've got to use a farmer to make this thing now to make a farmer you've got to have an advanced greenhouse so if I'm gonna spend that much on making this thing how does it compare to those two things? Like I've got a farmer here that I was comparing it against, an advanced greenhouse over there. Now I was going to set this all up very nicely where you could compare how much the output was, I zeroed them all, did them all at the same time, and then I messed up a couple of times. Uh, things got full, power got off, it messed up. Basically the way it turned out was if we take the greenhouse as uh, the default, we'll call it a one. The uh, garden cloche put out three times as much canola as the greenhouse did. That one little block there versus this whole nine by nine, it put out three times as much. The advanced greenhouse put out twice as much as the farmer. The other consideration is power. The uh, farmer here uses almost no power at all, like one RF per tick. The advanced greenhouse is a real hog on power. It's uh, 110 to 130, so about 120 RF a tick. The garden cloche is pretty well behaved. It uses about, uh, about 15, bounces up and down a little bit. It's around 15 somewhere. RF per tick. So garden cloche is the definite winner. Oh, the other thing that makes it a winner is it puts out way more seeds than the other two. Like dramatically more. So that's uh, that makes it ideal for the situation we're dealing with here. Okay, um for automating the empowered uh not the empowered, the crystallized canola seeds. I'm not sure how I want to do it yet because I don't want to drop them one at a time in the world, uh, let's say onto a pressure plate and have this thing do them one at a time because that eats an extra thousand each time you press the button, a uh, thousand RF. So that sounded kind of wasteful. I'd rather drop a stack at a time or two stacks at a time. I don't think you can do much more than two stacks at a time. So do you know of any way to drop a stack at a time in the world? The only thing I can think of to do is to put something on a timer so that it drops like one or two stacks before the beam hits and automate it that way. Is there any way with conveyors or anything else that puts items into the world to actually do a stack or two stacks at a time? I'd be interested in hearing if you do know of something like that. One other thing I wanted to show you is how I got uh, these things, if you're not familiar with them. I made myself a painter, 
and I put one of the blocks I use that as the paint and you need some uh, conduit binder eight of them you make conduit cascades put them in here with what it, this can be any block you want it to be it doesn't have to be uh, these things and then you get the conduit cascades and you put those on top of the just click them on top of a conduit um, that's some already made here there it is let's say I wanted to click it on top of this one here whoops I missed don't hold shift when you do it guess I gotta break this with there uh, there we go I'm not, I got it back and that's the way you cover them up okay last thing I want to cover off is some bees I'm not gonna spend as much time on bees today I've done a lot of it in advance I used cultivated princesses with noble drones in an attempt to get majestic I used cultivated princesses with diligent to, in an attempt to get unweary I did 10 of each for my majestic uh, let's show you what I got actually I don't really need to go into the details on each of these I did get one uh, majestic majestic drone these are all uh, half breeds uh, so if it's a half breed cultivated majestic I put it with a majestic noble if it's a majestic noble I put it with a majestic cultivated and I'll do those up as the combination to get those up on weary uh, same sort of thing this time I did not get a, a good drone they were all uh, half breeds but those were the three best that I got in each case and I'll put them in and hopefully I'll be able to build them up from there oh something else that uh, I don't know whether I showed you this before or not. I have, whoa, all sorts of crap in here. What it hit. <laughs> oh yeah, all of these uh, are gonna be the same. So basically this thing is do it doing its mining and feeding the stuff into the drawers. So it caught some stuff that it couldn't put in drawers basically. Um, but that makes it much easier for me I don't have to uh, I just move this and that and they're really easy to move everything stays with together well I hope you enjoyed the episode hope you learned something new go out there and have some fun thanks